this week something a little bit unusual. Actually, since I ride an electric unicycle, the Nightbot Z10, I'm kind of the weird one. If you ride an electric scooter, you're the normal one. We're going to test out the boosted rev, and I'm going to tell you why I think this might be the biggest launch boosted we'll ever have. In this episode review of the boosted rev, why I think it's the best electric scooter on the market, and with the coming of nicer weather, group rides. Run the intro! As always, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and hit that like button. So remember my complaint about the non-stop rain here in New York? As if God heard and then promptly ignored my prayer, it continues. But thankfully, just before I finally gave in and installed the fender that I so hated on my Nightbot Z10, the sun made its long overdue return. First of all, I think Boosted had become synonymous with electric skateboards. Just as GoPro now meant action can, and I'm sure lots of people will argue against it still being the top e-skateboard in today's crowded market, where Chinese brands are making inroads with improved budget boards and more customized higher-end shop like the NYC Kelly offer product far surpassing in performance. Despite all of that, for the public at large, the consistency and polish of the boosted brand mean that it will always be an attractive entry point into the e-skate world. But there is a problem. Electric skateboard is, how shall I say, scary. It's not just a perception, but there is a reason why e-skate rider wear as much protection as they usually do. But scooter on the other hand... Due to the explosion of interest with scooter share because of company like Bird and Line, a lot more people have had the opportunity to test out an electric scooter. And I guess it's no surprise that Boosted will want to elbow in on the market based on their experience engineering, building and selling electric skateboard. And like their board, they're taking a slightly different approach towards their product. First of all, let's talk about the elephant in the room. The scooter is $1,600, which means that Boosted is certainly not going to market this wheel to either Burr or Line as a replacement to the Ninebot or Emotion scooter that they currently employ. At that price, they are targeting people who have fully caught the personal electric vehicle bug and won the next level of performance when it comes to electric scooter. And what they offer is not just a more capable wheel, but something that would be better designed, manufactured, and more importantly, backed by an American company offering warranty support and services that consumers have come to expect for a product that costs as much as a high-end electric skateboard would. Yes, there is higher performance electric scooters available. However, they are made by companies you never heard of and carries no warranty outside of what dealer like eWheel provides aftermarket. Now, if you're a hardcore electric scooter enthusiast and don't mind repairing and modding your own wheel, the uh, boosted rev isn't really for you. But what about the rest of us? Now let me just tell you one of the things that I love the most about the design of the Z10 is the sense of functional transparency. There's a clear expression of what this thing is, even to someone who don't know what an electric unicycle is. It is all about the wheel since the Z10 actually had the widest tire ever fitted to an electric unicycle and as a result the designer decided to keep as much of it exposed as possible and this is also why I've been reluctant to put the fender on the back of this wheel since I feel like it ruins its look. Now how is this relevant to the Boosted Rev review? Well you see, I believe that design concepts are universal and applies regardless of platform. Its ability to communicate is something unfortunately often I find lacking in many of the new personal transportation vehicles. So this is my GoPad ESR 750, the granddaddy of the modern day e-scooters. This guy is so old that it actually ran on lead as a battery which explains the massive weight of 60 pounds. It does have a few things going for it, I mean for a while, look at how beefy this pneumatic 
tire it has and also the really heavy gauge steel tubing on it. GoPad is a well-known company for designing off-roading scooters so they're well experienced with building something that is really robust and capable of taking on very tough terrain and it translated very well for an urban scooter and as a matter of fact you know it's rare for me to find a scooter even today that is built as well as this thing so and it was for the same reason that I love the design of the Boosted Rev. Larger, beefier pneumatic tire coupled with heavy gauge steel framing and a BMX style handlebar. I don't know how to describe it other than by saying that there is something incredibly American about the way this wheel looks. You see, even though we might be a bunch of coastal urban dwelling tree huggers, I think as Americans, a little corner of our psyche will always be pulled toward the mythical, rugged wilderness that lies just beyond the reach of the suburbs. We might not drive a Ford F-150, but we can appreciate its rugged utilitarian aesthetic. This is why the SUV was, is, and will always be the most popular vehicle here in the US. The thing is, Unlike the electric unicycle or even the stick four, the formal thing about the ride quality of an electric scooter isn't excitement, discovery, or even the sense of flow. I think it is predictability. The thing that is most attractive about the electric scooter, more so than any other platform, is that it is easy to learn. As long as you have a little bit of experience when it comes to uh, bicycling, you can basically just jump on and go. It isn't the most maneuverable, intuitive, or exciting thing, but it is stable, robust, with the added stability of the handlebar able to handle acceleration and sudden stop better than any other platform. There isn't the steep learning curve associated with the electric unicycle, nor the potential nosedive induced crash of the one wheel. The throttle and regenerate braking is controlled by the same clever rolling control unit Boosted have perfected on the remote for their electric skateboard, hardwired so you never have to worry about disconnect. There is also a disc brake connected to a traditional lever on the left hand and a step down fender brake on the rear wheel. Combined with having handlebar to push against, you're well covered if you need to come to a hard stop very quickly. And in practice, the electric region braking felt solid, reassuring, and had better stopping power than even the lever disc brake, which felt more like a backup than something you will need on a regular basis. The two pneumatic tires both grip and cushion well, and acceleration is respectable with a top speed of 24 miles per hour, which matches the performance of the Boosted Stealth, the most powerful skateboard Boosted made. I mean, I had my 9BOT Z10 set up to beep at 25 miles per hour, and given the chaotic traffic conditions here in New York City, I really hit that alarm. For most daily regular commuting, you will likely not need to be higher than that. The Rev felt like it hit a sweet spot. If you really do want to go faster, you wouldn't just need a larger scooter, you will need a full face helmet, an armor motorcycle jacket, knee braces, and the work just to keep you safe in the event of a crash. You'll also be looking at a significantly larger and heavier scooter, which then begs the question, why don't you just get a motorcycle, which is designed and built for even greater speed, and also coming electrical variety if that's your thing. The BMW 3 Series has been the most popular model BMW sells here in the US. Who have been, of course, competing neck and neck with Mercedes for the top spot in the US luxury auto market. Now I can say with some certainties that most of the owner of this car will likely never visit a racetrack nor ever push their threes anywhere close to the envelope of their performance. So why is it that people pay this premium where their driving is mostly confined to suburban traffic or the parking lot of the big box store? And you should buy the Booster Red for the same reason that you buy the BMW 3. Now of course you don't need the performances doing day to day commute but yet it is a joy to have the power and torque available when you like a quick burst of excitement. This is an incredibly accessible vehicle that just about anyone could get on and enjoy and I think one of the smartest positioned product in Boosted's lineup. Yes, there are scooters out there with greater capacity motor and batteries in a similar price bracket, however I think at this price point, design, engineering, and quality 
qualities of product are no longer good to have, but uncompromisable requirements. This is the premium scooter you would expect of its premium pricing, with warranty and sales support by a reputable company, and in that regard, they're none like it. Convenience, reliability, value. These are all good and logical reasons. However, that's not why we do the things we do. We do them because of love. And that requires just that extra bit of oomph that you won't get from riding disposable Chinese scooter from Lying or Bird. There is something absolutely liberating to carve and pull down the street with nothing but the collective high-pitched whine of a hundred electric motors in your ear, the wind blasting your face and the city whirling by. Up until this point, the price of emission had been not just having the board or wheel with sufficient spec to keep up, but also the skill, confidence, and daring to do so since both electric skateboard and unicycle has a bit of a learning curve. The boosted rev, on the other hand, is your backstage pass, secret handshake, or whatever you call it that get you in on the experience. I think it is absolutely brilliant. I hope you enjoyed this video. Curious about electric unicycle also? Check out my other video on my personal favorite, the Nibot Z10. Oh, and I'd love to know what you think. That's what the comment section are for below. Finally, I would greatly appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel and like the video. Until the next episode, thank you.